There we go. I'm Sue Greenwald with the Empowered Light Holistic Expo. Our next event is called Codes of Awakening in Orlando, Florida, January 10th through 12th, 2020, just around the corner. I'm here tonight with John D'Souza, Brad Johnson, and Jason Quitt. I'd like to introduce them all. Hi, guys. Hi, Sue. Hi, Sue. Hi. Can you kind of uh, go over your backgrounds and maybe a little bit about what you'll be talking with in Orlando? I don't know who wants to start. Maybe you, John. Uh, yes, I'm uh, John D'Souza. I was uh, an FBI agent for 25 years, and I travel all over the country now talking about these topics, uh, like uh, awakening consciousness, like what we're doing in Orlando, uh, January 10th to the 12th. Can't wait for it. It's going to be a pretty awesome event. And uh, I will be actually, I will be doing the presentation, Hacking the Matrix, Becoming a Para Investigator. And uh, that's, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm going to be bringing a lot of information, new information, and uh, some well-known information as well uh, that I will be updating uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the weekend there and telling people about what's really going on uh, behind what they see going on in the public. Uh, so that's what I'll be doing. And uh, with that, I will throw it to Jason. Thanks. Um, in Florida, the first uh, talk that I'm going to be doing is called uh, Multidimensional Journeys, Altered States, and the Unseen World. And this is going to talk about uh, the awakening process. It's going to talk about my own personal awakening, about um, expanding awareness outside of the third dimensional body into the astral world and then other dimensions. So it's a, it's a pretty involved uh, talk and there will be obviously um, participation from uh, the people in there. So it'll be a very uh, live and entertaining uh, experience. And then on Sunday, I'm gonna be doing a course called Re Rebuilding the Energetic Matrix with Egyptian Postures. Now this is very close to home to me. I've been using this system of Qigong, these Egyptian postures for uh, many years, almost 20 years. And they've bettered my life. They've bettered my understanding of energy. They've awoken me to feeling energy, using energy. And uh, it's going to be um, quite a workshop because we're all going to be practicing this and learning about these different postures, how energy works, how energy flows, and how we use energy in the awakening process. It sounds great. How about you, Brad? I know you're doing um, quite a bit of work there in Florida. Yeah, yeah, like on Friday night. So hello, everybody. My name is Brad Johnson. I will be uh, doing a, an Adronis Challenge uh, Friday evening. It's going to be called The Codes of Awakening. And The Codes of Awakening, again, is the title of this event. And so it's appropriate with Adronis coming through. And he's going to be talking a lot about uh, activating ourselves. He's going to be talking about activations. We're going to be talking about light language as well, too. I'm also going to be bringing in uh, Adronis's counterpart, known as Rayar. And she's going to be doing some light language activations as well, too. So we're going to be looking more into activating the energy body, working with the energy body, uh, learning how to clear away entities as well, too, uh, doing any other particular type of advanced energy work as well. Uh, Dronus is also going to be taking some live Q&A. So if when you guys have any questions, you can talk to him directly. And then, of course, on Saturday and Sunday, I'll be doing the Spirit Ambassador Workshop. So this is a combination, uh, kind of like an earlier bird understanding of the, of the classroom that I'm doing right now that's uh, on my Patreon. And so with the workshop, you're going to learn about working with a pendulum. So if you guys have a pendulum, please bring a pendulum with you. If not, I'll teach you how to be a pendulum yourself. And we're going to work about how to communicate with spirits, how to do environmental clearing, how to work with love energy, doing uh, different types of template work as well too, working with the BCR technique, uh, breath work, calmness, reinforcement, how to uh, perform states of instantaneous healing upon yourself, and, easy, and even being able to work a lot more deeper with spirit, connecting with spirit a lot more too, and just getting you ready so that if you want, you can participate in the Spirit Ambassador classroom because that's really where all the action is. So that's what I'll be doing on Saturday and Sunday. And of course, it'll be very interactive. Uh, when I did it in Philadelphia, when we were just there last time, had a really receptive group, had about 15, 20 people, and they were just eating it up. They loved it. We did all kinds of great stuff. We actually went outside the building and we started cleaning up a lot of the energy outside as well too. We're going to be doing that again. So it's going to be a very interactive class. You're going to have a lot of fun connecting with spirit, uh, working together with other people, partnering up, doing exercises also. Um, I'm also 
uh, going to be having these with me as well too. This is the healing code cards. Okay, so these will be available to me. I might have me about 30, 40, 50 of them available for sale. I have them at a discount rate as well too. And these are an incredible healing modality. Feel free to use them. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you on Orlando. Sounds great. Well, John, you're going to be doing a uh, Clear Hearers workshop as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's correct. And, uh, and clear I, Hearers. Uh, Go ahead. I'm sorry, didn't mean to interrupt you, but I wanted to say that um, it seems that you know your intuition has basically saved your life multiple times and probably assisted you from making pretty bad mistakes throughout your life, just from talking to you and hearing your stories. So I'm assuming that you'll be telling more stories like that and talking about how people can develop their clear hearing abilities. Yeah, absolutely. I'll be doing my clear hearers workshop and clear hearing is just the ability that people have the innate ability to perceive a clear voice of authority that comes to them during times of crisis, most usually during times of crisis to help them uplift them and sometimes save their lives. And it's a very common phenomenon uh, and it's a very unique phenomenon. It's one that we haven't even had an English word for for a long time uh, until now, uh, because this was always referred to as clairaudience, uh, clairaudience, which is a, a French term, which was based on Joan of Arc, Joan of Arc in the 14th century. And so clear hearing is really an, an updating of this ability that so many people have. And it's a very, it's a very, um, it's a very simple criteria to know whether you're clear hearing and it's just that this, this voice, which is perceived, not heard through the ears, but perceived, uh, is clear, it is concise, and it is actually from a higher form of yourself. It is a form of yourself that lives in the breath of God. And that's the best way we can describe it. It's very, uh, English language is a very poor uh, way to uh, describe these things, but it's the best we've got. And so I'll be doing that workshop that will, that will uh, show people how clear hearing works, what it is, uh, how it differs from voice hearing and other, other uh, things that uh, are similar to it, um, and how they themselves can exercise it like a muscle and to use it and develop it for their own, for their own help, their own benefit. And that's what I'll be doing. I think that uh, that to me is the most exciting thing because we all have that ability and probably many of us are using the ability and don't even have a label for it. And for those of us that are intuitive that, um, you know, we've been working with that for a while, but when I, you know, talk with people and hear their um, excitement about it and how they're developing that, it just makes it seem like we've really done a good job. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, one of the other things I'm excited about for this weekend is the Q&A session on Saturday night. It's really one of those anything goes type of Q&As where we'll be talking about the current events that are going on, as well as spiritual development and how we all fit in with that. And of course, um, the title has gotten us some, I hate to say it, censored from several of the advertisements I've tried to do. But um, we'll be talking about the latest information out there and disinformation, I guess we could say. So any question goes. Do you guys have any um, comments about that um, uh, Q&A session? Yeah, we need to um, be covering a lot of the uh, topics with new information. And uh, because people are always looking for new information at these conferences. And we need to touch base with each other on what this new information is so that we can just run it through, run it through and for people and be able to uh, share it with them on every topic that is going on in current events, whether it's political, economic, or, uh, or exopolitical of any kind. And that's what I think. That's, I think we should be covering all those topics. Uh, in our Q&A and uh, throughout the conference as well. Right, yeah. right, right. I know I watch it with great interest and I know that there, there's so much happening right now as we speak that we can't even talk about what the topic will be because it'll change within the two months. 
So what we think mm -hmm. is secret now will probably be revealed by then or whatever we hope. And, uh, but um, really the whole reason um, I wanted to put this together was really to bring um, another layer of consciousness and awakening to people that, you know, haven't been able to travel to where we are, Philadelphia, in my case, where I do a lot of the expos or to your areas. So that's why we chose Orlando, that it's um, an easy, quick, and relatively inexpensive, fun place to visit. We're in a resort-like setting. We have a great conference room set up for us and all the amenities are there. So people can stay in vacation before or after our conference, but it's going to be very comfortable and fun. And of course, we'll all be there. So that's going to be even more fun. Nice. So, um, so uh, John, I know you have quite a bit of um, quite a few projects out in the works right now. You just were in um, the cosmic secret. And I think that's had great response. Can you talk a little bit about that project? Yeah, the cosmic secret is the new movie follow up to the previous one that we did, which was above majestic. And, um, you know, Above Majestic was the movie where we dealt with hidden history, forbidden history, ancient forbidden history, and how it blends into today, into our modern economic, uh, economic political systems as well. Because we are now living in a world where everything, exopolitical topics uh, like UFOs, uh, like... Um, like uh, weather control, like cabal activities that are being perpetrated against, uh, against all of us. Uh, all of these things are coming together. They're coming together and uh, movies like Above Majestic and uh, Cosmic Secret are the first I've seen that address this synthesis, this coming together of all of these topics and up to and including uh, awakening and consciousness that is being uh, the levels of awakening and consciousness are being raised in the population by leaps and bounds and it's happening right now and that is part of what is going to eventually affect the overthrow of our political system with the cabal that has complete control over all the nations and all of us and that is undergoing, but that's going to be the last symptom. That's going to be the political overthrow of that system and the banking system and the reset. All of these things, wonderful things that are going to be happening, those are the final symptoms uh, that are going to come into effect. The first symptoms are what we're seeing right now, the awakening and the consciousness raising that is happening in the population at large, right. which is, and that, that is the cosmic secret. It's the secret that we are in ascension right now. We are in ascension. And by doing conferences like this, uh, Sue, the one that we're doing in Orlando, Florida, uh, Codes of Awakening, what we're doing is we are declaring boldly that it's time for us to spread this information and to help people in person to take get access to this information and to spread this among everybody. And to step forward, really, to step forward and be counted, because there's what's coming. There's not going to be any hiding. There's not going to be any fence sitting. People still think they're going to be able to sit the fence on this, what's happening, what we're coming, the uh, dread point that we're coming to right now in society. And they're not going to be able to. Everyone's going to have to choose sides. And the ascension is inalterable. It cannot be put off. It cannot be uh, a delayed uh, it is coming and it's coming now. Anyway, so that's the cosmic secret that we're all talking about so much. Well said. It's, you, you can't avoid it. You can't hide and you can't get off planet. So you have to go through it. And of course, you want to pick your side carefully. <laughs> and I think, you know, we've, we've all dedicated what we do toward helping those in our community. And we want to ripple out to, you know, the world. And I know when we talked this summer, Brad, uh, you had given me a statistic about how many um, at, at that time, and that was in August, had awakened. Mm -hmm. Was it 30% or was it far yeah, less? Yeah, what I've, what I've heard from Adronis sharing is that one third of the population of the planet is basically the ground crew. 
And so they're, they're doing a lot of work, even if they don't even know what's, this is kind of the interesting thing as well too. And it's quite as fascinating, like what John talks about the clear hearers as well too. And uh, Jason has actually talked about this as well too. Like uh, Jason, I remember one of the stories you were talking about, you were sitting on the subway and you could see this phantom aspect of yourself going and healing a person in that particular way. I've also been just recently told about this as well too. So many people are doing this. It's like one third of the population that you don't actually consciously have to do any kind of uh, work on people. As soon as you're walking down the street, there's these phantom aspects of yourself that are connecting with other people, helping clear away negative thought forms, clearing away heavy emotions, clearing away maybe any certain particular types of ailments that they may have as well too. So they're all going through a very tremendous shift of this uh, next level healing that again is just coming through our own phantom bodies. You could refer to it as different types of astral states, but basically all of these people uh, just walking down the street, having a miserable day. And you have this person again, who's one, one of the one third, you know, just walking down. And now these, these phantoms are coming in and actually clearing their body. Uh, I've also talked about background people as well too. I know Dolores Cannon has talked about it as well too, about how when you're actually in the city, uh, and if you're, having, you're in like a very busy metropolis and you're walking down the street, I'd say about 50 to 60% of those people are actually just holograms. They're not actually soulful beings. They're actually just holograms. They're inserts, they're extras, they're living extras of the background because you simply cannot associate them. They're completely non-interactive. And so it's kind of like on a movie set, you have extras and the extras aren't being interacted with. They're just kind of in the background. This is what I've discovered as well too, actually for a few years. And now it's just coming back into the light again about people being educated about background people and just focusing on the people that they have relationships with and rapport with and doing what we can to work with them. But like I said, even when you're doing work, there's aspects of you that you're not aware of that are clearing up people at the same time. Wow, I wanted to ask Brad about that because I get about an aspect of that, which is that I get a couple of emails, mm -hmm. at least a couple of emails every month from people who have me in their dreams, in their dreams. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they always have me doing something very specific, very <laughs> mission oriented, yep. usually to help them with something. Yep. And it just, it's happens all the time. I mm -hmm. constantly am getting these emails from people like I'm going to know something about it. You know, yes. like I'm going to yes. know what happened. <laughs> and it's like Brad said, I've it appears to be times. versions of myself that are not, mm -hmm really connected to me. Well, here's kind of the wild thing as well, too, is there's versions of you that are actually appearing on different on different areas of the planet where people swore that they have seen you, but I said, well, I've never been to that city. I've never been to that town. I've never been there. I said, John, I swear it's you. I saw your face. I saw your body. I saw everything about what you are. And I said, well, I can tell you it's not there. That's my doppelganger. You're actually connecting to my doppelganger. And that's part of the living extras, the background people in that way. We actually have holographic inserts of ourselves just appearing in different areas of, of cities, of different towns, different countries all over the world. And especially when you're popping into another person's dream, again, that's another phantom effect. That's a projection of yourself. You know, they're, they're bringing in that permission for someone like you to come in because they respect you. They have that rapport with you. And then this insert holographically of you comes in, does all this great knowledge, and then kind of disappears after that. That's again, all part of this uh, kind of background holographic insert effect or doppelganger that basically is taking place. And when you're in the astral, um, the beings basically don't look like anything. They're just almost like uh, shadows with form. Mm -hmm. And the shadows with form can take on the image in which they believe you will be comfortable with. So for example, I, I as well get emails all the time uh, from people saying, you know, why did you do this in my dream or teach me this or show me this or take me here? And I always say, I have no recollection whatsoever of me inserting myself in your dream, but whatever that astral form is, it's taking the form of someone that you're comfortable with where you know that you will receive the information from. So it's very calculated. And, um, we do have these, we call them, uh, you can call them astral doubles or um, aspects of yourself. And there are so many of them. And when you're, um, and I, I don't know if you've experienced this, uh, Brad, but basically when you're sitting and you're meditating, um, those aspects you can see actually walk out of your body mm -hmm. and go somewhere and you have no idea where yep. they're going. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then yeah. sometimes you'll get these things, um, which are the aspects they'll come back 
and just step back in and sit into your body again. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, where did that thing just go? What did it do? <laughs> yep. mm -hmm. um, so you have this kind of separation of consciousness and part of the awakening process and consciousness that we're, we're discussing, it's how do we work with those energies and become more aware so that I'm aware, John's aware, John, uh, you know, everybody mm -hmm. is aware. That was my next these, question. Yes. Yeah. And it takes, it takes a lot of time. And sometimes it's extremely frustrating because, you know, there's many times where this would happen to me and I'd be basically praying like, you know, take Jason's consciousness awareness with you so I could understand what this process is, what is happening. And very rarely it does happen where my consciousness is taken for the ride to experience it. And it's usually to go like, like Brad said, it's to go to where someone needs help. It's almost like our energies are called upon at a subconscious, superconscious level. Mm -hmm. And the mind of the 3D reality, Jason, for example, it doesn't need to know or understand what's happening. That's right. It's just once the body is the multidimensional form is, I'll use the word crystallized, is active, awake, and aware, they just go and do what they need to do. Um, and it's almost like an autopilot system. So it's, it is very beneficial once you start getting into the hang of what's actually occurring with you. Yeah, exactly. It's the same as if people were talking about shadow beings, like they'll have shadow people in their room. This is very much kind of like the astral people that you say, yeah, they don't really have form. Uh, even if they do, we can't really perceive it in our physical reality. So they will take on a canvas, they'll take on a mold. And this is again, why we can see doppelgangers of our best friend or other people in that way, or even ourselves. When I've gone into meditation as well, too, I've just seen myself kind of like the eyes through the other astral version. So I'm seeing myself in another dimension. I'm seeing myself in another planet. I'm seeing myself in another city. And I'm kind of getting those. It's kind of like, uh, I'm not sure if you guys have seen the anime called Naruto, but uh, <laughs> it's when you have uh, shadow clones. And basically, he cancels out all the shadow clones and all the memories of the clones come back together with him. Now, that's actually a very truthful statement, especially if you actually have a clone of yourself that's alive you will actually experience everything that that clone experiences as well too. When that, that clone dies, you'll be aware of that aspect of yourself that has died as well too. The same thing goes with uh, other astral duplicates as well too. If you really tune your awareness, you'll actually see exactly what they do, where they've been, how they've maybe dissolved from a certain particular reality. That comes back to you and there you therefore acquire that knowledge based upon that doppelganger or clone or symbiote in question. But even, uh, it's not just that, it's, it's beyond that. It's also parallel selves and uh, simultaneous uh, lives or in other dimensions. Um, there are aspects of you that are dying. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you will get a glimpse of that life. And sometimes you will actually get uh, that experience or that knowledge that came with that life integrated into your self here which is very here's interesting. the funny thing i've never actually died in a dream that's the funny thing i can actually t cross that off my bucket list brad has never died in a dream <laughs> <laughs> so i don't know but i'm sure you know people have that experience then lucky you i know right i'm just saying <laughs> hey, these... i'm blessed <laughs> so, so but i have heard these about that shadow people these shadow people don't have anything to do with like an evil entity shadow person like the hat man or i forgot some of the other names of these uh, shadow entities that come and persecute people sometimes. Have you guys ever heard of the yep. hat man? Yeah. Or uh, and Slender, Slender Man. Yeah. Slender Man. That was the yeah. name I was, yeah. I was trying to get to uh, because I do um, sometimes uh, people will tell me uh, stories. Yes. Yeah, so I've had people who have been brutal, who have been basically abused by shadow people. But I mean, Jason could probably talk more about it too. So, but I've seen that happen. Oh, but no, that's something is... separate then from, from what no, we no, it's about. it's all this. It's all the same, but it's almost like an individual uh, basis. So, um, yes, there are you can call them demons or entities or whatever you want to call them that could take a form. Let's say like the Slender Man or let's say like um, the Hat Man, for example, and um, they will start to feed off your energy and start asking you to do things. Um, you know, especially mm -hmm. with um, Hat Man. Um, you know, they may ask you for physical things like your, your hair or your, you know, they just keep asking. Mm -hmm. um, so they're slowly siphoning the life off of you because that's what sustains them. And it's because it's a, a thought projection as well, because um, our thoughts, our emotions actually create things in the astral world and in other dimensions. So we can actually create um, collectively a demon or an angel 
and right. we can give it form, give it a personality and identity. Or fuel, or fuel their consciousness, like yes. give them to fuel their... Uh, let me tell you yeah. a quick story on that particular, on the exact point. I uh, had a young lady who was, uh, who was a, um, she, a young lady who had a baby recently, and she, she told me this story. This story is uh, it's a public uh, story, and I'm, I'm going to put it in a book somewhere at some point. Uh, and it's, she had visitations from this slender man, uh, hat man, she called it hat man, uh, this creature seven foot tall. And it was, uh, it would wear a hat. It was very tall shadow creature. And after she had her baby, it, she would see it sometimes at night in her baby's room uh, by, and, and getting closer and closer to her baby on different nights. And eventually she, uh, she walked by and eventually she saw the creature right over her baby's, um, her baby's uh, crib, uh, looking in, looking in. And so she ran in there and the creature turned away from the baby and put its hand around her neck and started choking her, started choking her. And she said, um, he was, he was, she was going to die. She was being choked by this, this creature. And in that moment, she got a couple of downloads. One download that she got was that the, the creature was never after her baby at all. It was after her. And it was just trying to get her somehow to pay attention to him or to come to him. And that was one download. And the other download that she got was that she is still in some kind of control of this situation. Somehow she is fueling the existence of this creature. And at that moment, she said to herself, uh, she said it out loud in her mind that you can't just kill me like this. You have to give me a chance. And at that moment, he loosened his grip around her neck and she was able to bat his hand away. And she said, then she declared the authority and blood of Jesus Christ. And he screamed and disappeared. And that's exactly how that went down. And when she tells this story, she's got like, you just see these giant tears in her eyes just falling from her eyes because she was so concerned for her baby. But it goes, but that story just goes to what you just said, Jason, about how somehow she was fueling the existence of this, this scenario, this creature. And she did have some measure of control over the situation, even when she thought she was being killed. It was really weird. And you'll find that a lot. Um, we'll call them uh, deceiving entities because um, they may come to you um, and put fear inside of you. And the more that you fear, the stronger they become. The moment you're like, okay, I give up. I'm not dealing with this. Or uh, I always tell people that you have to always know that you are stronger than that in that world. And it, it also, it almost becomes like the matrix, like the movie, the matrix where they stop the bullets. It's like suddenly when your consciousness and mind knows you can't do this, this is not real. Suddenly you have gained complete control over the situation that now they're scared of you because now you just figured out that they don't really have the power here. Um, so, it gets into this thing where you have these projections that are created um, for positive or negative, you know, and um, let's say the person that's created them is long gone. So now you have this energy, this memory, this thing uh, is now dying because it doesn't have somebody to keep it alive. So it will travel to try to find someone that has the t same type of characteristics, be it an emotional state, be it a trauma, be it even uh, a favorite food, you know, and they will connect with that frequency and say, okay, this person can sustain me. And then they will do that. Most of them don't want to be caught. So they'll try to make your life quite good, <laughs> you know, because they, it'll sustain them. Uh, it's usually when you come in contact with them in the extreme that this lady um, told you, usually 
they get to that point when they are no longer able to maintain that being. So that being may have been with her her whole life and she never knew it. She was never aware of it until the day she was ready to let it go. And then that's when she faced it. And that's when she felt the, uh, felt the control over it. That yeah, it's very similar to entity wow. attachments, like how they work as well, too. An entity cannot sustain itself if it has nothing to feed. It basically just drops out of this dimension altogether. It goes into another nether plane, another kind of astral domain that is much more representative of its energy. And basically, it's so hard. You could almost like feel the, the entity, uh, its, its essence in that way. It's almost like a raisin. It just, it's, it's all shriveled up. There's very little light in that way. And so they basically go off into these nether regions and they're almost in like a type of purgatory in that way. So they basically have to come into this dimension and get fuel. If they don't have fuel, they can't remain in this dimension. They'll drop away, they'll, they'll deteriorate. But anytime you're invoking the light, anytime you're invoking God, anytime you're invoking something like Jesus or Buddha or anything of that nature that represents a very high frequency, they, they can't stand that. That's like them burning up in that way. This is what I teach a lot of my students is just, if that happens, here's how you clear away entities. We all do it with uh, the spirit. Exactly. This lines, uh, lines up with a lot of the stuff that I was told from two groups. Uh, one was my relatives from South America, Ecuador, South America, who would tell me these stories about, they would tell me about ancient demons that were in the, in the business of a single crime, whatever that crime was. Like you could have a, a demon that was in charge of just like bank robberies, like that's all they would do. And so they would always find people who were somehow inclined towards that particular crime. And when they would lose that person, they would go find somebody else who was really into, into inclined towards theft and robbery and assault. And they would do that sort of thing. And then the other group of people who would tell me about that sort of thing were uh, serial killers. Serial killers who would educate me on how serial killers are so protected, are so protected, and they would tell me that, uh, and I actually write about this in my book, The Power Investigators, where they would, serial killers would educate me that we have, they have access to ancient spirits that love a particular type of murder, and those would stay with them and they would offer a sacrifice to those demons and those demons would in turn protect them and help them and push them forward. And the only time when the serial killers would get caught were when they were abandoned by their, their host spirit for whatever reason. And that was another thing that they would tell me. So that's really, that lines up with what you guys were talking about. Perfectly. Well, here's a funny little tidbit for you guys as well. Whenever you go to a funeral, don't wear black. <laughs> whenever don't you're going to black? simmer don't wear black spirits can basically attach themselves onto black black is void it's universal so any particular type of vibration pertaining to that spirit can actually just cling right onto your clothes right so i'm actually teaching uh, people in my class make sure you're checking your clothes especially if you're wearing a lot of black no entities are attached to them right especially if you're going into cemeteries if you're going to hospitals if you're going to churches you know that have graveyards in the back as well too uh, whenever you're walking through that, spirits can just basically attach right to black. This is why spirit becomes the most active when it's nighttime, right? It's basically, it's void. So when you're in void, spirit again has kind of like the, the lay of the land. So whenever you're going to, uh, to cemeteries and people are wearing black and they're mourning about their lost loved one, this again is just something that can be an attachment. They can actually attach to your clothes. And actually, uh, when you're wearing black, they can, they can stay with you for a very long time, as that can also be a mesh for them uh, coming into the body based upon one who's exposed magnetic, magnetically and coherently able to bring that entity into themselves. Wow. Yeah, black is, is void. You know, spirit can go into anything relating to void. And it's, it's, it's uh, energies of any type. It can be loving energies. It can be fearful energies. It can be all those particular energies altogether. Of all particular bands can touch in, into black. Because black basically has no, has no restraint, has no limit to it, has no uh, restriction. Well, I'm wearing black right now. Yeah, I think you're okay, though. You're in a yeah. good house. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it's interesting because... Um, you know, I got, um, well, this is why we talk is because, you know, I got the exact opposite teaching. And the reason, uh, like when we uh, were doing uh, ceremonies and shamanism, especially when you're doing uh, extractions of entities, um, the shaman will wear black um, 
because that the black is the protection color. So it is so it doesn't latch to them. It'll go to something that they can see. And usually, what we would do is build a fire, like a candle or a fire, sacred fire, that the entity will be attracted to and go into that fire, and not you. Also, in uh, uh, ninjutsu, um, they use the uh, the black cloth around certain areas of their body that are weak, so that when they cover uh, the weak parts of the body with the black co uh, cloth, it is actually strengthening the energy around that area and not allowing uh, manipulation to enter in and around that space. So it's interesting that there's so many different teachings it's a all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can use it for a concealment purpose as well, especially if a shaman, they know what they're doing. Yes. And especially if you're wearing black, that, that can actually be a protection thing as well too. You can use it for protection. You can use it for concealment. You can even use it for, uh, again, a containment for higher healing as well. So there's many different aspects of it. But basically when you're going into a cemetery and you're grieving and you're very deeply emotional and you're wearing a lot of black, it's actually yes. well known that people kind of come out of there heavier than usual. And that's usually the sign. Mm. I heard you're supposed to wear red over whatever you're, something red, and that yeah. protects, that gives a, a measure of protection also, whether it's just like a wristband or a tie or a, or a bandana, something mm -hmm. red. Gives I think that's, that too. that's very ancient, and it's to ward off the evil eye, and what they'll do is they'll do like, um, in some religions, they'll do red string around the arms. Um, sometimes they would just take a piece of red cloth or a handkerchief or something and stick it in their pockets just anything that had this red color to it was a very powerful seal of protection. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm forgetting to say at the beginning of everything, uh, my investigations have shown, that's what I'm supposed to say. Uh, so my <laughs> investigations have shown that wearing red gives protection to the person. Blah, blah, blah. So, okay. I'll remember now. <laughs> cool. We got it. But here's the thing is like, you know, we're talking about, awakening and consciousness and now when we're talking about all these things that people may look at and say you know what we're talking about is very uh, dark or, or scary or things like that and the point of discussing these things or even the point of going through the awakening process is to understand that these things are out there but we're in control we're in power and doing different systems of meditation um, healing the mind the energy the body and understanding our place in this multi-dimensional world, we gain this, not only understanding, we gain this absolute strength of our own personal sovereignty to walk in this world and not really care that there's all this weird stuff out there. And I've been sitting and trying to write new episodes and new books and all these different things. And every time I sit down and write, I write something and I'm like, I can't show this to the public. <laughs> <laughs> I've had those situations too. So. People, I got to a point where I'm like, people are going to hate me. <laughs> people are not going to like what I'm going to tell You're being too dark. Them. You're, you're taken over by the, by and, the agendas. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's not even about that. It's just about when you get to a certain point, um, you kind of lose that fear, but you want to educate. And sometimes you have to go into some very strange places because everything's a mirror. Mm -hmm. everything's an aspect of ourselves and if we're not comfortable going there then we need to understand why we're not comfortable going there yep absolutely i can relate to that too because i mean one of my recent videos was talking about lucifer and satan right and looking into that and that there's a lot of distortions behind that whole thing right we basically look at saturn and thinking that saturn's some big evil planet she's originally a goddess right and she was basically perverted it goes back into the old saying everything that has been uh, created here to enlighten us has been perverted and demonized to prevent that from happening wow agree and beliefs are incredibly powerful and what we believe we will into this world. That's it. So we really have to be careful. Um, and yes, if you go and learn the history of belief or the history of different religious texts, things flip flop, things change, mm -hmm. you know, so definitions change, characters change, stories change. And we have to understand what is the reason for this change? Uh, who wants to control what, how are they trying to build and control the mind of society using these belief systems and stories. And it changes from generation to generation. So we have to be aware of the, I think the thing is we have to be aware of the whys. Why are we getting this information? Why is this story important? Why do they say to do these certain things? 
Um, and that's when we start to become the, the mystic or the awakened or the person sitting back and taking it all in, but not jumping to conclusions of what that answer or where that path will lead. Nice. And tell us about the band, uh, Jason. Uh, from, I can see their, they left their instruments all behind you uh, all over the place back there. What's going on with the band? Are you leading me into a joke, John? <laughs> no, I'm just trying to find out what's going on with the guitars. All well, the guitars. Take a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, okay. Well, the, the joke to lighten the mood because we always have to be funny, okay? Laughter yeah, breaks the it. energy. And I guess mm -hmm. John is telling me we need a joke. It's my band, uh, the, the Trez Goatees, uh, Jason, John, and Brad. <laughs> That's the band. <laughs> no, but honestly, what we're looking at is the st <laughs> Sue's laughing. Uh, what we're looking at is the studio in which I do record. Uh, I know you're seeing that side, but this side is much more complicated that you can't see. <laughs> and uh, basically, it's a fully operating uh, recording studio where we can do uh, video and also audio at the, um, I'll, I'll call it the professional grade. So during the winter time now, uh, this is when I could actually sit and get work done, and I will be sitting here most of the winter and producing whatever comes to my mind. And I already produced a couple other a couple things, and I was thinking about releasing it, but again, that information would make a lot of people angry. <laughs> so I'm just kind of. What is it? Apocalypse? No, no, it's not Jason, about the apocalypse. It has to do with it has to do with the nature of the mind and uh, spiritual influence to create the reality that we're in, um, and I'm trying to kind of break free of everything. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm really trying to break free of everything, every uh, belief system that we're told, and the reasons why we're led in this way, and it even goes into uh, channeling, and it even goes into um, even what you're discussing with the cosmic secret uh, with a so-called event. And why do we have this consciousness on the planet? Why do we have these messages? What is it leading up to? Um, all these things. I just sit back and ask why <laughs> and try to build a history around it and what kind of energetic force is leading us, which is a very strange and weird topic if I'm making any sense whatsoever. Yeah, you are. I definitely want to. Um, I'm going to sit in a, on your presentation, Jason. I hope I'm not uh, on at the same time because I got to find out what what the secrets you're holding back there. Oh no! <laughs> well, I got a lot of secrets to come as well too, but I'll save that in the appropriate Excellent. time. But to but to go back to music, I'll just say music, and I do love you know putting the guitars behind me whenever I do these things. Now there is something magical about music it doesn't have to be guitars it's just music in general it could even be your voice uh, i have found the greatest strength in my awakening is music if i'm not feeling well if something's going wrong in my life if i pick up like an acoustic instrument like that guitar and play it and hear those vibrations through the body of the guitar enter my body i can feel that energetic change and shift i can feel certain areas of my brain awakening and I've had spiritual experiences when I go to sleep at night, and I know it had to do with the music that I was playing. It does something. It, it, it creates pathways of energy, if that makes, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, does. it does. I'm not a musician, but I get the idea. Okay. <laughs> well, you're part of the band, Brad. I, I do chanting. Chanting's I fine. I think we're going to have to do some playing at the uh, presentation. That's what it looks like to me. Oh, that'll put me to the test. Well, Sue, you've been pretty quiet. Did you have something else you wanted to share, Sue? Well, I, I, I could probably over talk everyone, but one of the things I wanted to say is, um, you know, how we talked about like activating other people. So before this September Expo, when you were all speakers, I had a very clear, uh, I think it was either a dream or a meditation that said, the speakers this weekend will activate and awaken many. All right. So really, I think that's my whole goal in doing this is not only will it be fun and we're all going to have a great time, but 
it, it's getting this information out to people and, and stimulating new ideas and helping people in different ways that we don't even know. We don't even know how it's going to help people. So that's really exciting to me. And I love the fact that we're able to do it in person and hopefully make it convenient for people that can't travel far. So we're hitting the East Coast in this case. So that's pretty exciting. One other thing I wanted to say is, you know, we were talking about um, the doppelganger is mm -hmm. I, I call them doubles. All right. Yeah, so that's basically what it is. Just a, yeah. an astral duplicate of yourself. Yeah. So it's a spiritual double of yourself and you can actually put them to work. So I, I have taught people in the past on how to send your double out to do a, like a pre paving task for you. But I've been taught to teach them always call it back because you're you're basically kind of giving a piece of your energy away and you want that back integrated into your your energetic field and um so i've been doing that for years myself on purpose and i never consciously um am with that double it's just a thing that i say go do this for me or whatever and it really seems to pave the way it's just adding a level of assistance that you know you don't have to think about Mm -hmm. One other thing that I teach people is whenever I go into any building and, and I, actually I do it for certain areas on a daily basis, I, I clear those areas energetically and I ask to you know, have that protection for myself, but also those that I um, pass or in the whole area that I'm going to be because it's helping everyone in that area be clean and clear, feel better, be happier, not have these attachments or entities. And then a lot of times when I'm walking through a store, I will actually, let's call it, put a bubble of magenta love light around me and like beam it out to people. I, I know this may sound crazy, but I love going to the grocery stores and the natural food stores. And I'm always smiling because I do like going there and there's cool people there, but I'm blasting love energy to those people. And if you look around, most of them are, you know, they're feeling a little bit of pressure and stress because of the pricing in their economic situation. And they're not happy because they're spending money and they're worried. So I'm blasting clearing and love energy to them. And I do that pretty much wherever I go. So that's just a conscious thing that I do, but I know that we, we always do it unconsciously. And what we're doing with our awakening is spreading that, those uh, uh, codes of awakening, like, like the um, event is called, to those that we interact with on a daily basis or just by chance. Like, I know I've, I've met people by chance and I can feel a bubble of energy shift within me. So there's something that's happening. Like I just felt something blasting me right now. Hmm. So. It's interesting because I was feeling something earlier like that too as well. Yeah, so. yeah. It's me, I'm in, I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what I've also found though, is sometimes I'll have an attachment or I'm drained. Okay. There's, you know, I, I'm the kind of person I overdo it and then I, you know, I have to recover, but I'll have an attachment or an entity and I am transmuting it. And that's when I feel like weak. And so really it makes sense to do these things proactively. So we don't get ourselves weakened to the standpoint where, you know, these attachments can come in and then drain us further, you know? Mm -hmm. Now I, I had a, one other question. I could probably talk forever. So uh, Brad, probably for you, when you're removing an entity from someone, mm -hmm. take it off the person or whatever, what do you do with it? Do you send it to the light? I don't actually do anything to it. Basically, all it is is just a command for spirit to come in, right? God's light in that sense, God's energy comes in. It does all the work for me. So basically, right. like when I'm teaching my students, I said, you don't have to do any work. All you're doing is you're just putting the command because you're working with spirit. Spirit is working with you. That's the exchange. And you're just putting that intention for the command to lift that energy. Uh, basically, in my class, we have what's known as a five zone healing system. And we work within those five zones. There's actually a sixth zone and a seventh zone as well, too. I haven't taught my students that yet. Uh, but within those five zones, uh, you basically just get spirit to come in, clear it all out. And like I said, the, the session is done in less than five minutes. So basically, you're just clearing it all out. Spirit deals with it. Spirit is infinite intelligence, intelligent infinity. It knows exactly where these beings need to go, where these entities need to, to go to. A lot of them basically just go back to their own dimension. Like when I have seen it, I just seen like this kind of energy. It's almost like shadow energy shadow energy coming right out of the person and it just goes like into a portal 
and then it's completely gone after that and the person starts to feel a lot better but if we don't work with uh, the emotional vulnerabilities if we don't work with the traumas those entities can just come right back again right so basically a person can feel relief for a certain amount of time and then i start working with that person's energy i start looking into the traumas that they're holding and we work together with that in a cooperation we work to harmonize that we basically exchange we swap we swap dense energy for love energy we put a lot of love energy into that person that person now has a clean bill of health and now entities that try to come in it's basically like hitting a brick wall so basically we just we do a clearing we work with that person one to one uh, relating to their emotional states and helping to clear out all of the vortexes or portals contained within a wounded energy field we basically work to seal that up with with good vibrations and loving energy one of the things I really love is that it's been proven scientifically that certain modalities, yoga, tai chi, chi gong, like Reiki energy, that fortifies our aura or our energetic field. And so one of the things you'll be doing, Jason, is talking about the Egyptian qi gong postures and, um, you know, talking about that at our event. And um, I know that when we're physically feeling good, which is a big component of it, we're able to fend off, let's say, more of these nefarious um, attachments and things that we don't want. So um, that's pretty exciting as well. Yes. Um, what I was taught was that um, our energy field is our first line of defense. So basically, when uh, we strengthen our energy field, we put it in a specific order where uh, these things that we carry may not even be able to hold on longer. So, you know, Brad was talking about um, first to remove an entity, you have to heal the wound because that is what the entity is attached to. So you can't just take an entity off a person because it's going to come right back. You have to work on that energy and why this thing is attracted to you. So when you're doing Qigong uh, or many other different modalities, what you're doing is you're consciously saying, I'm going to take control of my energy. I'm going to repattern, re-energize my energy in a new formation. And in that formation, these things cannot hold on to. So it's a very uh, pure way of getting rid of wounds. It's a very pure way of getting rid of entities because you don't have to think about it. You don't have to think, I'm going to heal this aspect of myself. Just the fact of changing your energy and moving on that direction of self uh, care, um, you've made that decision now that you're going to let go of these things at a super conscious, subconscious level. And as you do the work and, and go through the different practices, that stuff is going to fall away without you even noticing. And that, I think that is the easiest and most beautiful way of doing these things. Well, I like easy and easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I was just thinking about um, a couple things. I had a heated discussion with a friend of mine a couple weeks ago who was working with someone attaching or removing the entities and she took them off this person and then she said she saw them go on to somebody else and I was really not happy with that at all. And I felt like she did, you know, let's call it the world a great disservice and I kind of had to walk away. So I wouldn't have handled it that way. But I think what you're getting to is th there's a deeper issue that the attachments come for a reason and that our, our energetic field or our vibration is similar to what that attachment needs. You know, it's and, fuel. And I'll just say this, and I know this is controversial. It, actually, a lot of the things I say are that. But anyways, um, these entities are actually your greatest teachers. And I'll, yeah. all right. They are here to show you your woundedness. That's it. Mm -hmm. So once you heal that part of yourself and those entities are no longer needed in your path, they will go and teach somebody else. And it's part of this path of awakening um, and understanding who you are, because if everything was perfect, Seriously, if everything was absolutely perfect, we would be stagnant. There would be no growth at all. We would destroy ourselves if everything was perfect. And I know that sounds like a strange statement, 
but it's these things, these shadow aspects of ourselves that actually expose us to what is needed to, to, to make us uncomfortable, to make us take that next leap of evolution in our own personal spiritual journeys. So, you know, when I was going through these things and it was like uh, entity attacks and these things where I thought were absolutely negative and I hated it, looking back 10, 15 years later, I was like, that's my greatest teaching moments in my life. Uh, they taught me how to navigate the astral. They taught me how to heal things. They taught me how to pull them out of my body. That's it. It wasn't like a master teaching me. It's I had to figure out how to get rid of this stuff. So that's how um, I, I wouldn't give those experiences away for the world. Take that as a <laughs> Shadows are always going to be your greatest teacher. Whenever you're working with these entities, because we think it's bad, you know, they're in our kidneys and they're, they're amplifying depression, they're amplifying anger and all that stuff. It's showing you just what you have, have within yourself, right? Reality happens from you. It doesn't happen to you. It never happens to you. It's always from you. You are radiating that reality. You are always moving into that structure on a deeper level. And so when you have these shadow beings coming to you and basically uh, attaching to you in certain ways and your, your amplification of emotions are now being aware, this is the greatest favor they can never do for you. This is what I've spent the past several years cleaning up myself, right? A lot of it is thanks to Adronis. He's been sharing me a lot of this stuff, but it's also just doing the deep work. I think people are just so obsessed with hitting a red button and say, make me better make me better. Here's this red button. Here's this easy button. I want a red button and just make everything go away. It's not going to happen, right? When you're basically, it's like Jason says, when you go into that state of perfection, your stillness, there's basically non-existence. You're not going to have anything. You're just going to be, you know, uh, stilled completely within the frozen, frozen moment in time. So yes, because we're in a duality, because we're in a dimension where there is continuity, we have things to learn. That's the idea of motion. Motion itself is always about reality in flux. And so it's part of the co computer simulation that we call the universe. I'm coming to see uh, Brad's presentation too. I want to be at both of them. Oh, well, we'll same. just be all at each other's. <laughs> we'll see everybody's, see everybody's presentations. Well, I, I'm really looking forward to seeing what Adronis has in store for us because, um, you know, at the expo, you did the Adronis 20, 37, 37 38, 30. mm -hmm. um, which was new information for many people. You're probably the only person I know that is, you know, uh, stuck his neck out, if you will. Yeah, and that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and come up with a date i mean like mm -hmm. what's what's going to happen and you're like firm yeah. on that date and you've and well I john love john Don Oaken and myself are the only two that are talking yeah. john yeah. Don Oaken has talked about 2038 he's looking to the the pyramid measurement he's looking to the egyptian timeline that the great pyramid of giza does he has said 2038 but he doesn't know what's happening in 2038 so basically i'm talking about 2037 2038 and what's happening there. So yes, I'm the only person that's doing that. The good news is though, I've actually talked to a lot of people and they say, yep, right, I've looked into that and I can completely agree with you. I just don't wanna talk about it in public because then I'll get all these eyes on me too. It's like, yeah, I know the feeling. I'm, I'm here to <laughs> suffer the slings and arrows if I need to. But again, spirit wants me to bring this information out. I'm not, a, it's not a, nothing about my personal ambition. This is not personal ego talking about 2037, 2038. Let's talk about it because it's going to bring fame and all that stuff. No, this is this is all about, it's kind of just a, a letting you guys know, you know, life is going to continue. We're still going to have life afterwards. Things are still going to move on, but this is the idea of the end of an old age and moving into a new age. But life will still continue on this planet. Life will still go on. People will still have the challenges. People will start to build new foundations. Some people may be on another earth. Some people may be going beyond this, beyond this earth. It's just a big splitting that's happening around that time. And um, I don't know, whatever you want to call that. Some people want to call that the event. I couldn't care less about the event, really. It's just about the idea that this is the end of an age and the start of a new one. Yeah. And I, what I really liked about that session is that you, um, you know, not only did you talk about what's going to happen, you're going to, you're talk, you talked about how it's going to look for both sides mm -hmm. in the future. And it yeah, you'll so be walking on two worlds simultaneously in that way. For those of us that are going into that other earth, yeah. you'll basically, I've, this has happened to me as well too, where I basically have had dreams, I've had visions, where I'm just walking on this other earth and there's another earth in the sky at the same time. And I'm seeing that, that reality very, very clearly. And then there's this earth as well too. So you're basically walking two earths at the same time but I'll start off very, very slow. As we get closer to that time, more and more people will feel that. And some people are already feeling it already, so it's a good thing to see. Right. 
So, so one of the goals we have is to bring as many people with us to, you know, like to. Not really. Them. Not really. No, nope, that's not even the journey. Not at all. No. <laughs> your your goal is just to just to help wherever there's help, but you're so not here to say, you know what, I need a, I need a quota. I need a toll. I got to have a quota and, and I'm going to bring this many people with you. That, that becomes kind of arrogant, right? The whole idea is we're just here to assist. We're here to guide. We're here to help. If people want to want our help, they have to kind of reach their hand. Our hand is always reached out. They have to reach back, right? But we're not here for a quota. We're not here to say we have to get millions and millions of people up here. We certainly want to see that happen. But again, we have to just get past this idea of thing that we're trying to control people to feel that they're going to get into the top level. That has to be their journey. Nobody controlled me to get me to where I was. Nobody's controlled Jason or John to where they are. You know, we all had to get that way or Sue with you. You had to get that where you needed to go, right? Nobody can basically say, hey, I'll take care of this and I'll do all your inner work for you and all stuff. Okay, man, that's, that's a little creepy, <laughs> right? So we always have to do our own inner work. There's no way escaping it. You can't escape that. There's no giant red button that will take care of that. Right. I agree with that. I, I did crawl up the cliff one inch at a time, you know, by my <laughs> fingernails, but um, it, you know, that's a, how little, do it. That's, that's a little it. ease would be cool, but I, I know that, w w you know, being human, like if there was no challenge, we wouldn't grow. We would just stay home and chill, you know, well, you'd be, you'd be we still, have... you'd be still, you'd have absolutely no existence yeah. whatsoever. You'd be completely yeah. frozen beyond time yeah. and space. In fact, I have a fear of being bored. <laughs> <laughs> I like to always have like 10 things going on. So I have a lot of stimulation and ideas and creativity, you know, and then I, <laughs> go a little off the deep end, but, um, yeah, but I, yeah, careful, my goal, I can overwhelm you. So you just want to be careful with that. Yeah. So my goal was really to get the word out to as many people as possible, which I think is why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Mm -hmm. Like, and I people would, decide to show up and that's again, co-creation, right? That's yeah. the work that's coming yeah. together. Everybody, whoever needs to show up, perfect amount, a perfect yeah. amount for what we're doing. Yep. So, um, Adronis will be talking about uh, awakening on Friday Codes night. Awakening. Yeah. Ray R will be coming through as well too, doing light yep. language. Yep. Yes. I saw your last Ray R video and, um, it was very effective because there was some toning involved. And at first I wasn't sure what to expect. It was very powerful. So thank you. For she's, she's that. much more of a different energy. She's basically like straightening my, straight my back, putting my chin up, tapping here. You got to do this. And you're just doing all these movements while she's getting you to tone properly. Right? Yeah. And I have, of course, a long way to go because I don't have a singing background or anything like that. But it's not so much the singing as it is trying to make the tones as accurate as can. It's like, yeah, 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 right? And you're just doing all these different types of tones and it has an effect. And I have no idea what it's doing, but it's definitely doing something because people are tuning into it. Yeah. And they say, we want more rare. We want more rare. It's really yeah. good. Like, okay, great, great. I'll bring her through and you guys can have a blast with her. So That's good. So we'll have uh, Brad doing... Um channeling Adronis Friday night and John, you are invited. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so Saturday and Sunday, Brad is doing the spirit ambassador workshop for three hours each day. And then Jason mm -hmm. is doing the Egyptian Qigong postures. I think that's on Sunday. And then the multidimensional will be Saturday. And John is doing, uh, basically the, uh, hacking the matrix, which I love the name of that. Right and then the clear hearers. So those are our, our presentations. And then we have the added bonus of the Q&A session Saturday night, which will be really anything goes, any topic goes. And we can't even plan what we're gonna talk about because by the time January rolls around, it will be radically different than it is at this exact moment in time. So anything else we should add? I would just say that uh, coming together, all of us, um, in that location, it really creates an energy. And it's one thing to listen to us online or on radios or on our YouTube channels, but to be there in person, we're creating an energy. We're creating something that when you go home, you're gonna take some information with you that you did not have before. Um, and we can't predict what type of transformation or healing or knowledge you will come away with. But just by being there and being with like-minded people um, to hear the presenters, there will be energy shifts. And I could already um, sense that um, there will be some very good transformations. 
That's excellent to hear. And Jason, I know you talked throughout, you know, this last hour about, you know, you're, you're kind of afraid or whatever. You're, you're careful about putting yourself out there. I see the words go, like, it's like that monopoly, like writing the, but it go in green letters with a big, big exclamation point. So it's, it's really like, get it out there is what I think it's telling you. Yeah. Yeah. I just and don't like, being, <laughs> I just don't like being the first. That's, that's when you get the problems. Let somebody Dude, else. I know exactly first. what you mean. So believe me, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I can relate to that. So I'll come <laughs> after. I'll just agree with them. <laughs> yeah. I think you know, to say, you know what, I'm crazy. Don't worry about it. You know, dismiss yeah. it, whatever you want to do. But hey, just putting it out there, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank I you know for that. <laughs> I remember I saw your video, Brad. You did a little snippet of a video about 2037, 2038. And I was like, oh, Brad. <laughs> oh, no, my, my, my ex girlfriend was saying the same thing. Brad, I don't know what you're doing. You got to be careful with this. And all of a sudden, she had like spirit grabbing her out of her body and saying, what Brad is saying is absolutely accurate. Don't question. Okay, fine, fine. <laughs> so, and there's been other people as well, too. Say, Brad, what are you doing? You're putting a date in. You've never said anything about dates and stuff. And I said, I know, I know. Because this isn't my information, guys. This is spirit's information. This is why I keep saying, so guys, spirit's information, not mine. I'm yeah. just being the vessel to share this with you. You want to do? You want to talk about it? Talk to spirit, right? Simple as that. Talk to God. God will sort it out. <laughs> wow. Well, it's going to be a great weekend. I'm very excited that you're all coming together. It'll be so fun. And the topics are going to be so interesting. And I know, uh, John, with your presentations, you always have them perfectly planned out. And of course, you never probably followed the plan 100% because people ask questions, you go into uh, stories, and, and there's always more current stories that co come up than what you've already got planned to talk about. So I'm sure there's going to be no shortage of cool information. Very cool. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time, everybody. And for those of watching this video, please share it around. And we hope to see you in Orlando, January 10th through 12th. And if you go to empoweredlight.com under the events tab, you'll see the schedule and details. And there's a link for the tickets and the hotel information. And we can't wait to see you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank thanks, Sue. Thanks so much.